Grant Roberts. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. I just want to pick up there where uh, David Shearer left off about the fact that what the government would purport that this bill does is in fact restore the confidence that's been lost in the GCSB. And the reality is that under the watch of John Key, public confidence in the GCSB has dropped to an all-time low. And the reality is that this bill, and in particular part one of this bill, will do nothing to restore the confidence of New Zealanders in the GCSB. And in large part, that is because the Prime Minister has said and claimed right throughout this debate that this bill does not extend the powers of the GCSB. It's a completely laughable claim, Mr, Mr. Chair. Almost every submitter who came before the Select Committee made the point that no case had been made I'm sorry, but the, par the Parliamentary Committee, the Statutory Committee, every submitter who came in front of that committee, bar one, said this extends the powers of the GCSB and there is no case being made for it. So not only is the Prime Minister just plain wrong and misleading New Zealanders by trying to say that this is just a clarification of the legislation. That's what the explanatory note to this bill says. It says this is a clarification. It is not. It is an extension of the powers of the GCSB without justification from this government. And Mr Chair, when we look at the case that the government has made for this, they knew about problems with spying, arguably illegal spying, last year. Was there an urgent piece of legislation put into this House to say New Zealanders' lives are in danger? We need to ensure that the powers of the GCSB are extended. No. The government tried to cover that up initially through the Prime Minister, and when eventually it was forced out into the open, we went through the process that we went through to get this bill up now, and then the Prime Minister had a sudden rush of urgency. That's when John Key suddenly decided the whole thing was incredibly urgent because it was time for him to stick a band-aid over the wound that is the GCSB to this government. And when Chris Finlayson stood up um, earlier on, he was running through his, his, his list of 12 commandments, and he said, when he came to section 9 about the appointment of the director of the GCSB, he said, here we will finally codify the situation we have where the State Services Commissioner is the person who, ad person who uh, advises the Prime Minister on the appointment of the director of the GCSB. Well, if only that had been the case. If only that is what John Key had done when he appointed Ian Fletcher. Except he didn't. He got on the phone to his mate, told him to ring the chief executive of DPMC, who I noticed, Mr Finlayson, isn't mentioned in section 9 of the bill. There's nowhere in there where it says the appointment of the director of the GCSB will happen after the Prime Minister calls his mate and tells him to ring someone who's on the appointment panel to get some advice. Because that's what John Key did this time round. And so it's all very well for, for Chris Finlayson and John Key to say we've got this process now around the appointment of the director of the GCSB that's so much more transparent. But the reality is what in section nine here, what is put in section nine here today is actually the very thing that John Key rorted. The very process that John Key rorted when he made that phone call to Ian Fletcher, when he got his mate appointed. And why is that important, Mr Chair? Why is it important that we have some confidence that the director of the GCSB is appointed in a transparent way? Because more often than not, it is just the director of the GCSB and the Prime Minister who are making the decisions, who are in the room having the conversations about New Zealanders' rights. And today, tonight, in this piece of legislation, the power of the GCSB is extended explicitly to be over the spying of New Zealanders. Now, New Zealanders throughout the... Which bit, says Anne Dolly? Which bit? Read the bill. Read the bill, because that's what was there. Explicitly, this bill does that. It starts, it starts, Mrs Tolly, right at the start with the change to the functions of the Bureau. It starts right at the start to expand the powers. And New Zealanders, most New Zealanders accept the fact that we need security intelligence agencies. We need agencies that are able to ensure that New Zealanders' national security is protected. But what New Zealanders want a reassurance about is that those powers will not be abused and misused, and that there is proper oversight in place. 
and that we move into a new era of technology where New Zealanders make great use of that technology. They want to know that their every communication will not be spied upon. They want to, Mr. Chair. Grant Roberts. They want to know that their privacy will be protected in this new age. And what we see in this legislation is, in fact, that definitions of things called information infrastructures are broadened out. There they are. They're broadened out so that it covers everything. There's something in there which is effectively location data. Almost every person in this House and watching this on television will have some kind of smartphone or access to some kind of smartphone that has location data on it. From today, the ability is there for the government to be able to use that data. And right around the world, Mr Speaker and Mr Chair, and this is one of the things that this bill completely fails to take into account, is that right around the world, people, people's attitudes around the privacy of their electronic information is changing and evolving. People are beginning to understand more and more about the reach of the state into what can happen with their electronic data. And at that very time, Mr Chair, that's when the national government decides it's time to expand the powers of the GCSB so that they can roam freely about electronic information provided by New Zealanders. It is not rubbish, Mrs Tolley, and it's time that the national government actually listened to what New Zealanders are saying, actually listened to what New Zealanders were saying about the privacy of their communications. Because what New Zealanders want, Mr Chair, is to have security intelligence agencies that have the powers to do the job that's needed to ensure that New Zealanders' safety is protected. But they want to make sure that that is balanced with proper oversight and with protection of New Zealanders' privacy. And what this bill does is get that balance wrong. And the Law Society came to the Select Committee and said the balance is wrong. The Human Rights Commission came to the committee and said the balance is wrong. The Privacy Commissioner wrote to the Select Committee and said the balance is wrong. New Zealanders from all walks of life are looking at a government that no longer cares about their privacy, that no longer cares about getting that balance right between security and privacy. And, Mr Chair, that is the major problem this side of the House has with this legislation. Mr Chair, when we look uh, at the clauses, um, um, the clauses in part one, in particular the changes around the functions of the bill, we can, we can see in clause 8c a significant change in the way that the work of this agency is done. While they are now cooperating with other agencies to facilitate their functions, what is clear is that they can do that for anything. They can do that for anything. Very defensive, Mr McIndoe. He won't get a call. He won't get a call. Sit down. Sit down. He won't get a call, Mr. Mr Chair. He won't get a call to McIndoe because the National Party does not want to front up to New Zealanders on this legislation. Clause 8C of this bill expands what New Zealand expands what agencies can work on with the GCSP. And the question for Mr Finlayson and the National Party members is: what happens with that data? What happens with that information? Will New Zealanders information be retained in New Zealand or will it be available for other, other countries to look at? That's the question that, that New Zealanders are asking. Because, well, Mr Finlayson doesn't appear to know the answer, <laughs> Mr Mallard, because he won't get up and be honest with New Zealanders about the expansion of these powers and what they mean. Mr Chair, if we look at the other parts of the, uh, of the functions of the Bureau, what this bill does is say to the, G, to the, the GCSB that you now have a wider mandate. Your mandate is now goes beyond foreign intelligence functions, it goes into cyber security. And into cyber security it goes without the proper checks and balances that New Zealanders would expect. And Mr Chair, if you allow me just to briefly mention something in part two, because it's relevant to part one. You go all the way through this bill with all the expansion of powers, and then you get up to section 15 of the bill. And just to make sure that we all know what's going to happen with this bill, it says that it applies notwithstanding anything in any other act, wow. notwithstanding anything in any other act, any act, could be the Crimes Act, could be anything. That's how loosely this has been defined. Mr Chair, on this side of the House we oppose this legislation. David Shearer has proposed an excellent SOP that would actually see a review 
of all of our security intelligence agencies so that we could get legislation that New Zealanders can have confidence in, so we can restore some confidence to security intelligence in this country. Under John Key's leadership, it has reached an all-time low. It will stoop even lower if this legislation passes today. I urge all parties, including Mr Dunn, to support the SOP. Chairman. Uh, Chairman. Dr Russell Norman. Mr Chair, I rise on behalf of the Green Party to oppose this bill tonight. And we're